day, dear students. This is Ma'am Arlene Adaliera, the science teacher. Today, we will discuss the fourth topic for quarter one, Earth's mechanism. You might have heard about the continental drift theory before. It is a theory by a German meteorologist, Alfred Wegener. He taught that the seven continents we know today have been once part of a supercontinent called Pangea. It broke apart like pieces of a puzzle and moved to their present location, becoming today's continents. He had many evidences to support his claim, but he failed to come up with an explanation as to how it happened. So today, we will try to answer the biggest question in 1915. What makes the lithospheric plates move? But before we answer our big question, let me remind you of our goal today. At the end of our lesson, you must be able to describe the possible causes of plate movements. And also, you must recognize the process of convection current in the mantle. From our previous lessons, we came to know the different types of boundaries or edges where two plates meet. When two plates come together, it is known as a convergent boundary. A divergent boundary occurs when two tectonic plates move away from each other. Two plates sliding past each other forms a transform plate boundary. The impact of colliding plates can cause the edges of one or both plates to buckle up in mountain ranges, or one of the plates may bend down into a deep seafloor trench. A chain of volcanoes often forms parallel to convergent plate boundaries, and powerful earthquakes are common along these boundaries. The Pacific Ring of Fire is an example of convergent plate boundary. Along the divergent boundaries, earthquakes are common and magma or molten rock rises from the Earth's mantle to the surface, solidifying to create new oceanic crust. The Mid-Atlantic Ridge is an example of a divergent plate boundary. One of the most famous transformed plate boundaries occurs at San Andreas Fault Zone. As we go on with our discussion, to answer our big question, we will be using some special words. I hope you will remember them well so that you can understand the concepts of plate movement. I have paired some of these words because they are often interchanged, so we will tackle them together to lessen confusion. The first word war is between lithosphere and a stenosphere. Lithosphere is a rigid outer layer of the earth made of the crust and the solid outer layer of the mantle. On the other hand, a stenosphere is the layer of plastic or flowing rock in the lower mantle. Plastic means it flows like a very thick liquid. Next up on our world war is mid-ocean ridge and trench. These two are found away from each other. Mid-ocean ridge is a long mountain ridge under the ocean formed by eruptions. The mid-ocean ridge is the birthplace of new ocean floor and crust. Trenches are the deepest part of the ocean. The deepest trench is the Marianas Trench. We also have our own trench called the Philippine Deep, which is the fourth deepest in the world. Now, let me introduce the solo contenders for our word war. Of course, you may already know that the word current is synonymous to flow. A convection current is a process that involves the movement of energy from one place to another. It is also known as convection heat transfer. When two tectonic plates meet at the subduction zone, 
one bends and slides underneath the other, curving down into the mantle. Subduction zones are where the cold oceanic lithosphere sinks back into the mantle and is recycled. Thus, we can call this the recycling zone. Trenches are formed by the process of subduction. Radioactive decay is the breakdown of an unstable atomic nucleus that releases particles and energy. Radioactive decay spontaneously happens in all rocks. This radioactivity is part of Earth's natural system and is the main cause of heat inside the Earth and the driving force for Earth's tectonic system, which leads to volcanoes, earthquakes, and plate tectonics. Going back to our question, what do you think causes the plates to move, despite their size and weight? The answer is heat. Heat energy can be transferred from one place to another by three main processes. But for this lesson, we'll, we will only focus on convection. In convection, Cold matter sinks due to higher density, while the hot matter became less dense and moves upward. We often observe this when we boil water. We can observe the rising and falling of water bubbles in boiling water. Aside from boiling water, can you give other examples of convection? A rising hot air balloon is one good example of convection. And yes, cooking with plenty of water, such as soups, can also show convection. And of course, the preparation of native delicacies, such as palitao, involves convection too. When the sticky rice is still cold, it sinks. But once it is heated, it will slowly float. You know it is cooked when it is already flowing. Thus, it is called palitao. Palitao means palutang. But how does convection answer our big question? What makes lithosphere plates move? In the Earth's mantle, large amounts of heat are transferred by convection currents. Heat from the core and the mantle itself causes convection currents in the mantle. Convection is driven by heat from the core and involves either the whole mantle or convection cells within the plastic asthenosphere. The upwelling in the convection cells occurs under the Earth's divergent plate boundaries, and cooler material sinks at the convergent boundaries. The lithosphere plates are dragged along the horizontal flow of the asthenosphere like a conveyor belt. Ridge Push. Hot buoyant mantle lifts and pushes the plates apart at mid-ocean ridges, where magma solidifies to form oceanic lithosphere. Gravity pulls the oceanic plates downhill from the ridges towards the deep ocean trenches or downhill from uplifted continental rift zones like the East African Rift. Slab pool. Relatively cool and dense oceanic plates or slabs have negative buoyancy after subducting at ocean trenches and sink into the ductile, less dense asthenosphere, pulling the rest of the tectonic plates along behind it. Again, convection is driven by heat from the core and involves either the whole mantle or convection cells within the plastic asthenosphere. The upwelling in the convection cells occurs under the Earth's divergent plate boundaries, and cool material sinks at the convergent boundaries. The lithosphere plates are dragged along by the horizontal flow of the asthenosphere like a conveyor belt. Do you know what a conveyor belt is? We usually see it in the airport. If you've ever stood at the baggage claim in an airport, 
watching suitcases and backpacks move past you on a baggage carousel, you know exactly what a conveyor belt is. It moves the bag around in a circle. Ridge push. It happens when hot, buoyant mantle lifts and pushes the plates apart at mid-ocean ridges where magma solidifies to form new oceanic lithosphere. Gravity pulls the oceanic plates downhill from the ridges towards the deep ocean trenches or downhill from uplifted continental rift zones like the East African Rift. Slab pull takes place when the relatively cool and dense oceanic plates, or what we call slabs, have negative buoyancy after subducting at ocean trenches and sink into the ductile, less dense, stenosphere. It pulls the rest of the tectonic plates along behind it. Let's take at another animation of a convection cell. Convection cell shows how heat comes from deep within the earth. As you can see, rich push is caused by magma intrusion and it provides additional force. On the other hand, slab pull caused by subduction is also another driving force. Going back to our question, can you now describe the possible causes of plate movement? Or how about explaining the process of convection happening in the mantle? So guys, let us remember these four key points about plate tectonics. First, the Earth's surface is made up of several huge tectonic plates, just like pieces of a giant jigsaw puzzle and they are continually moving. Next, the ocean floors are continuously moving, spreading from the center and sinking at the edge. Third, earthquakes and volcanoes occur at the boundaries where the tectonic plates meet. And finally, let us remember, convection currents in the mantle move the tectonic plates on the Earth's surface. And the source of the heat driving these convection currents is radioactive decay deep within the Earth's core. To end our discussion, let me share this interesting comic illustration I have come across. Is it about plate tectonics? Yes, but it also depicts a love story between a plate and a boiling magma. How do you find it? Do you understand its message? Please share it with your classmate. So with that, thank you very much for watching. I hope you enjoy our topic and you learn about plate movements and how it is happening. Till next time, God bless us all.